as you can see on my background, in this video I want to talk to you about container runtimes. My last video was about the Docker component, and one of the components is the runtime. The default runtime is runc, and you can use that to run simple containers, but you can also switch to a different runtime and run virtual machines. There is a runtime which you can use to get a higher level of isolation, but still use containers. So in this video, I will show you some alternative runtimes, and I will also show you the differences between these runtimes and the commands that you can use to check the differences on your machine. In this table, I try to compare these runtimes, and at the top of this table, you can see the fine names of these runtimes, like runc, which is the default runtime, and runsc, which is the runtime from Gvisor, and kata runtime from kata containers. When you are using runc or runsc, you are running containers. And when you are using the kata runtime, then you will run a small virtual machine, and the container will run inside that small virtual machine. So basically, almost everything we will talk about in this video is caused by this fact that we are using a virtual machine or a container. When you are using containers, then a process inside a container can see all the resources on the host. It doesn't mean that process can use the resources on the host, it only means that it can see how much memory you have and how many CPUs you have. And of course you can set CPU limits or memory limits, and when the process tries to use more memory than it is allowed to use, the operating system will kill that process. And when you are running a virtual machine, you assign a specific amount of CPU and memory to the VM, and the process running in that VM will see that. Now let's talk about the kernel. And I think I mentioned before in other videos maybe, but I have to mention again because this is important. So when you are running a container and you run a process inside that container, that means that you actually have a process on the host. And all that happens is that the kernel does not allow the process to see everything on the host. Which means that since the operating system has a kernel on the host, you don't need a kernel inside the container. Now what happens when you are using RunSC? When you are using RunSC, you still run containers, but RunSC can intercept the system calls before forwarding them to the host. So it can be slower, and the documentation actually recommends using this runtime only for user-facing containers. So you can protect your proxy container, for example, from attacks, and everything behind that proxy container can use the default runtime. It also means that when you want to check the kernel from the container, you will see a different kernel. You still don't have a kernel in the container, it is just an application kernel for intercepting your system calls. And when you use the cutter runtime, then you run a virtual machine, and the virtual machine needs a kernel. So when you want to check the kernel from that virtual machine, you will see a different kernel. And since cutter runtime runs a virtual machine, you could think that you could just list the file system and see the kernel on the host. And it would not work because, as I mentioned before, it is not just a virtual machine, it is a virtual machine and a container running inside that VM. And you could also think that you could just mount the file system from the host, since you know that when you are using a container, you can mount the file system, even the folder of the kernel. And yes, you can do that, but the problem is that you will never see the kernel inside that runtime, because the host is where your Docker daemon is running, which is your actual host and not the virtual machine of the runtime. The last line on this slide is about where you can install and use these runtimes. And when you want to use a runtime which will run a container, you can use that runtime on a physical machine or in a virtual machine. On the other hand, when you want to use a runtime like Kata runtime, which will run a virtual machine, you need a physical machine, or if you have nested virtualization enabled for the VM, you can also run it in a virtual machine. So you need to be able to enable this nested virtualization, which you could not do using Docker Desktop. That means you cannot use Kata containers with Docker Desktop, but you can use Gvisor and the default runtime, of course, RunC. Now, how you can use Gvisor with Docker Desktop is something I will discuss in a different video or maybe in a blog post. And the second slide, which is also the last slide, is about Kata containers.
and I don't want to talk about individual runtimes a lot, but I have to mention how Kotaku containers handle CPU limits and memory limits. So when you are using Kotaku containers, you have a default amount of memory and a default amount of CPU. You have one CPU and two gigabytes of memory. This is the default. And when you want to change that, you don't just override it. You set a CPU limit, which will be added to the default. So when you want to override it by two CPUs, it will actually add two CPUs to the default, and you will have three CPUs in the virtual machine. And when you want to use two and a half CPUs, that will mean that you cannot assign two and a half CPUs to the virtual machine, only three CPUs, but you will also have the default CPU, so you will have four CPUs in the virtual machine. And you can also set the memory limit. And if you set one gigabyte as memory limit, it will mean that you have two gigabytes as a default amount of memory, and you will add one to the two gigabytes of memory, and you will have three gigabytes of memory. And the other interesting fact about Kata containers is that you cannot share process name spaces or network name spaces between Docker containers. And you can also read about other limitations, and I will share the link in the description. Nice time to see everything in practice. And I made a script which can show you the commands you can run to check the differences between these runtimes. And if I just run this script, which I will share by the way, then you can see that I have commands as yellow text, which you can run manually. And I also have white text, which are the outputs. And you can get information about the kernel version, about the memory, about the CPU, and about the file system, which means that I want to list the latest kernel on the file system. And the only way to do that is running the command on the host, which means outside of any container. Now let's see the source code of this script. And at the beginning of this script, you can see categories like CPUs, memory, kernel, and file system. And these are the categories I can use as an argument. So if I exit, I can try to run this script with the CPUs as argument. And now I can get information about the CPUs. So you can notice that the only way to get one for the amount of CPUs is to use the kata runtime. If I run any kind of container or I run the command on the host, I will get all the CPUs I have. Now let's try memory. Again, I can get information about the memory and it will run the command on the host. This is the first line and it will run the command in the containers and the virtual machine made by the Kata runtime. And you can see that the only way to get less memory than you have on the host is using the Kata runtime. Okay, so the next is the kernel. Again, we are running commands on the host and in different kind of containers. And now you can notice that the only way to get the same kernel version as we have on the host is using the default runtime runc. If we use runsc, we will have the version of the application kernel. If we use the cutter runtime, we will get the kernel in the virtual machine of the runtime. And the only difference between the command running on the host and in the container using the runc runtime is that the output will contain different host names, obviously because all containers by default have different host names, and this information is included in the output. The next is file system. So now we are trying to list some files in the boot folder, and the only way to get some output is running the command on the host. If you try to run it in any kind of container, you will not get any output. There is no kernel on the file system in any container, unless of course you mount it from the host, 
but normally you don't have a kernel in the container. I tried to compare these runtimes, but there is no best runtime here. If you want to know which runtime is the best for you, you have to read the documentation and maybe try these runtimes and find out what these can do and what these cannot do. And then you can decide which is the best for you.